The Battle of Stahl Oponen, fought between Russian and German armies on August 17, 1914, was the opening battle of World War I on the Eastern Front. The Germans under the command of Hermann von Francois conducted a successful counterattack against four Russian infantry divisions from different infantry corps, which heavily outnumbered them but were separated from each other, creating a gap between the 27th Infantry Division and the 40th Infantry Division, and had little coordination with each other. It was a minor German success, but did little to upset the Russian timetable. Chapter 1 – Prelude According to Preet Buttar, the dual alliance and Franco-Russian treaty, and the obligations contained within them, would prove to be major mechanisms in the outbreak of war in 1914. The obligations of interlocking treaties now imposed themselves upon the plans and intentions of the military commanders. Russia had mobilized with a view to attacking Austria-Hungary in support of Serbia, but as German mobilization would result in a major attack on France, the Russians had to devote the main strength of their regular army to launching an early attack on East Prussia, in an attempt to draw off German troops from the Western Front. Germany's attack on France followed the Schlieffen Plan, a flanking advance through Belgium, with limited forces opposing Russia until a rapid victory over France freed up troops for the Eastern Front. France was counting on an early Russian attack on Germany, forcing the German redeployment of troops from the Western Front. Likewise, Russia was optimistic a quick attack on East Prussia to the Vistula would be decisive, allowing Russia to attack Galicia. Russia deployed the First Army, commanded by Paul von Rennenkampf, and the Second Army, commanded by Alexander Samsonov, for the attack. Combined Russian forces consisted of 208 infantry battalions, and over nine cavalry divisions with 192 squadrons. The First Army would attack north of the Masurian Lakes, while the Second Army attacked from the south. Germany defended East Prussia with the Eighth Army, commanded by Maximilian von Pritwitz, consisting of 100 battalions, supported by reserve and Landwehr formations. German defenses included fortifications along the Masurian Lakes, the Königsberg fortifications, and the Torren Fortress, 43, 64, 115 anticipating that the Russians would attack north of the Rominter Heath, then west along the Pragel Valley, Pritwitz ordered Hermann von Francois First Corps to take up positions along the Angerap. However, Francois advocated a forward defence, and by the 13th of August, had advanced his corps along a line from Godop to Stahlopponen, 32 kilometers east of his orders. On the 15th of August Renenkamp crossed the border with six infantry divisions, intending to follow the railway through Stahlopponen, and Gambinen, 115 to 117. Chapter 2 – The Battle On the 15th of August, Francois men encountered 1st Army's reconnaissance units northeast of Stahlopponen, and captured Eidkunen that night as the Russians withdrew. On the 16th of August, Pritwitz ordered Francois back to the Gambinen as he moved the 8th Army to the Angerap, after his Flieger Abteilung 16 reconnaissance flight spotted the 2nd Army concentrating. However, Francois kept his 1st Infantry Division at Stahlopponen, and his 2nd Infantry Division divided between Goldap and Tolming Kievman, 118 to 119 on the 17th of August. Renenkamp advanced with all three of his infantry corps, but in an uncoordinated fashion. His cavalry was to the north, while the 20th Corps, with the 28th and 29th Infantry Divisions, north of the road, and the 3rd Corps, with the 25th and 27th Infantry Divisions on the road and south of it. The 4th Corps, with the 40th and 30th Infantry Divisions were advancing on the Romint Heath further south. Francois called up General Adelbert von Falk's 2nd Infantry Division in Tolming Kiemann, and his howitzers in Gambinen, to reinforce his position in Stahlopponen as the battle intensified by midday. At 1 p.m., Pritwitz's envoy arrived, and ordered Francois to retreat to Gambinen. Francois' reply was to tell General von Pritwitz that General von Francois will break off the engagement when the Russians are defeated. As Falk advanced, 
he was able to attack the flank of the Russian 27th Infantry Division near Garitin, when a gap formed between the Russian 27th and 40th Infantry Divisions, 119 to 120, 122 to 123. A furious frontal attack broke the Russian division, which fled eastward, losing 3,000 casualties and 5,000 prisoners, including almost the entirety of the Russian 105th Regiment. Although the Russian 29th and 25th Divisions achieved some success to the north of Stolopponen, and captured several captives and guns, they couldn't change the outcome of the battle. Chapter 3, Aftermath Francois decided not to pursue the Russians, and instead ordered a withdrawal to Gumbinen as ordered. Prickwitz, capitalizing on Francois' success, moved his forces forward, while Francois held Gumbinen, 122-125. Chapter 4, Sources Bhutar, Preet. Collision of Empires, The War on the Eastern Front in 1914. Osprey. ISBN 9781782006480. OCLC 858956311. Gilbert, Martin. The First World War, A Complete History. New York, Henry Holt and Company. ISBN 0805-015-40-X.